Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to today's webinar by Omega ATC. I am Angela Halpin, and I will be moderating the event. The title of this webinar is The True Story of One Restaurant Chain's Breach. And we have two speakers with us today, Tracy Amorosa and Shaker Swami. Tracy Amorosa is the co-owner of Liberty Restaurant Group, which is a chain of 23 individual Burger King franchises. Tracy is kind enough to join us today to tell her story about being breached and the situation she was left to deal with as a result. She is not an IT professional and is self-admittedly not technical by nature. It's rare to have someone tell their story so openly as Tracy will be doing today, and we're very lucky to have her here with us. Shaker Swami is the President and Senior Security Strategist at Omega ATC, a recognized provider of industry-leading data security solutions that accelerate compliance with PCI DSS. He brings over 20 years' experience in retail systems and data security. Omega ATC, which he co-founded in 1991, was one of the first providers of centralized retail systems management and security for retail chains. Today, Omega ATC solutions are used by quick service restaurants, retail, convenience store chains, and petroleum marketers across the country. Shaker is the vice, Pre vice chair of the Data Security Committee of the National Association of Convenience Stores, PCI compliance speaker at Sigma conferences, and represents Omega ATC as a participation organization of the PCI Council. He is a familiar face to Omega ATC customers and partners, as actively engaged with cultivating these invaluable relationships as he was 20 years ago. In today's webinar, we'll be covering why breaches happen in addition to hearing a live case study of Liberty Restaurant Group's breach. All of you are on mute, but we do welcome questions. On the right-hand side of the screen, you may submit questions via the chat to me. Again, please type your questions in the chat box to Angela Halpin, and we'll be addressing as many questions as we have time for. Without further ado, I will turn today's presentation over to Shaker. Shaker, you have the floor. Angela, thank you, and, and welcome to everyone. Uh, indeed, uh, it's a great opportunity to hear uh, a real story from a company and a co-owner of a restaurant chain where she experienced significant hurdles to overcome the breach. So the first question is, why do breaches happen today? And there are a lot of reasons as to why these things happen. Uh, keep in mind that breaches can happen, they do happen, and will continue to occur. More importantly, retail environments are not data secure today. I'm going to discuss that in a few minutes as to what data security is all about. But discovering the breaches that have occurred, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes many months for these breaches to even be discovered, and the back door to retail locations is often wide open. People can penetrate from the outside or the inside, and no one even suspects that there is anything wrong within their environment. So continuous and proper verification that your point of sale systems, firewall, back office, and remote control are secure is absolutely critical in today's environment. In talking to a lot of people from the Department of Justice and other people in the business, it's clear that the cyber thieves today are very organized, they're sophisticated, and they're extremely patient in terms of how and when they use the data that they gather from all these breaches. There's another trend that is occurring, and that is opportunistic breach, which is really looking to see, hey, can I break into this environment? Can I steal data? sitting outside in a parking lot a lot of times. And that is increasing in small change today. And then employees, much to our chagrin, are also increasingly the source of breach in a lot of these restaurant chains and retail chains. So the bad guys inside and outside are more sophisticated than any retailer like you will ever be. 
And all you can do is make sure that you slow them down and you protect your entire environment. So 90% of the breaches that are seen today are deliberate malicious activity. And those companies that have been breached will tell you precisely how these breaches occurred because they have discovered exactly how that happens. And the back door into these systems, which may occur from the outside or the inside, is also a significant source of breach. 38% of all breaches uh, are as a result of the back door being open, and 85% of all the information that is stolen is represented by this backdoor issue. And the majority of the breaches by, that retailers discover don't discover it on their own. They are discovering it through third-party notifications. So that's why the breaches happen today. And I want to take you through some common gaps. You know, this, this is a more of a security term a lot of times, but you need to know it. The common gaps are those things that uh, are prevalent in a retail establishment inside the stores and perhaps outside as well. And quite frankly, um, there are quite a few bre breaches that occur as a result of a series of breaches, series of gaps uh, that exist in this environment. I'll give you a few examples. I didn't want to make it into a technical discussion here. What I'm representing here is about 13 common gaps that we see in a lot of retail establishments. For example, vulnerable services that should not be run, running on these systems continue to run. And there are poor access controls. And what that essentially means is there's no real clear way for people to deny permission to people to access things within these systems. And people continue to use vulnerable remote control without what's known as two-factor authentication. And do not confuse remote access with remote control. These are the programs that are used in a remote access environment to access information within these systems. A very common aspect that we see is default system settings and passwords. In other words, it's the same setting and same password on a lot of these systems, and there's no effective way to manage it, and therefore represent a significant gap. In a lot of environments, there's not enough monitoring. In some cases, there's no monitoring at all of the network or the systems, and there's absolutely no alerting occurring either. Systems are not segmented in a network. That Segmentation, what it does is reduces a risk from a breach, but it doesn't eliminate it. And, and lack of logging, this is the proof that you need on an everyday basis that everything is functioning smoothly and there is nothing going on within your systems. That includes all the Windows event logs, firewall logs, antivirus logs that give you the proof and generating alerts using these logs is very important as well. In fact, security strategists will tell you that all the evidence of a breach was already there in these logs if you only bothered to look at it. Lack of file integrity monitoring. Again, this is a more of a technical term used by QSAs, qualified security assessors, but really what it does is allows you to see if any critical Windows files have changed, in which case you need to be notified. Lack of wireless intrusion detection. People sitting in a parking lot attempting to breach into a store happens because there is a rogue wireless access occurring. Lack of consolidated reporting. And this is important as well for you to see on a regular basis as to what is going on and to create the evidence necessary to support a breach if and when it does occur. Incomplete policies and procedures. It's a huge area. People have to be trained as to what to look for and how to behave in a data secure environment. Missing and outdated security patches that you need to be aware of because without patching these systems, you're opening up to vulnerabilities. And of course, the last one is the storage of magnetic stripe data, which is the credit card data existing in systems that should not have that data. So these are the common gaps that we see. So you might wonder, why should I even bother with data security? Well, data security is a big topic, and people are focused on PCI compliance. And our view is, if you are data secure, you really don't have to worry about PCI compliance because that would happen on its own. 
So let's begin with what is data security. Data security is a means of ensuring that your data is kept safe from corruption and access to it is controlled. The second aspect is to ensure the privacy of the information. This is the non-public customer information that may exist in your system. And to protect both of these aspects and the control to the data is really what data security is all about. So it's not limited to just those systems that are in scope. You have to protect your entire store and your network. And then, it's all about protecting your stores. It's about securing your networks, the infrastructure within and outside your store, securing the applications and the databases so that you're not entirely dependent upon a POS vendor to make your data secure. That's just one element of data security. It's about ensuring that your business can continue to function in the event of a breach. It's, it's about minimizing the risk of a breach as well and to make sure that you have enough forensics for auditing purposes, even within your operation, even if you don't have breaches. It's about quickly recovering from an incident that might occur within your organization. And it's about being constantly on the vigil to make sure that your environment is clean, protected, and to make sure that you are in control over your destiny, not some uh, large chain or a processor or an acquiring bank or the card company. You should be in charge of your own operation and your security. So we're now to a point where uh, I'm going to turn it over back to Angela so that she can introduce Tracy to this group. Great. Thank you so much, Shaker. Tracy Amoroso from Liberty Restaurant Group is now going to tell her story about being breached. Tracy, you have the floor. Thank you, Angela. Uh, when we first bought these restaurants out in St. Louis, uh, it was our goal to make them the best in the good profitable situation. So we installed all new register systems, which Burger King in, it, it recommended. They came with four different vendors you could choose. So we chose our vendor after some consideration. And that was the first time I ever heard the word PCI. And they said the registers are PCI compliant. OK, enough said. So we installed them. Uh, we were up and running. We have 23 restaurants through the greater St. Louis area. And after about two years, I guess maybe two years, we got the, a phone call from Homeland Security. And they said, you have some credit card issues at one of your restaurants, our most remote restaurant, which is in Amish country. So we had no idea if anything was happening. We had no indicators. Homeland Security set up shop in my restaurants with cameras and video and tapes and everything, they found nothing. So they left. That was the end. They told me I was part of something else and we were just the end person and it, that was it. Well, that wasn't the end. Then we got another phone call from a company called First Data, which is our merchant provider, and they said, you have a problem. And then we said, okay, fine. So. We got our first notice from them that we had over $130,000 in credit cards um, damn, you know, breached. So <clears throat> then they said you need to hire a forensic guy to figure it out. So we went out and found our forensic guy. And not knowing how much any of this is going to cost, we just were told you have to do it. First, that is that you have no choice. They will start finding me immediately, 5000 a month until the breach is, is stopped and we get PCI compliant, which means we finish the QSA and every other aspect of it. Well, then we get a second call. Now we have a second store involved. So we're looking at in internal things, external things, passwords, technicians, trying to figure out where it is. The forensic gentleman can't figure out where it's coming from other than it's outside. Then we get a third phone call. And that's when our third restaurant, our highest volume one, was getting breached. Now the dollars that the credit card companies are losing is massive. And the fines that we're starting to incur are getting massive. The 5,000 is the small stuff. It's the other pe penalties that they give you 
and the forensic audit was for $15,000 a shot, and we had to do three. Regardless of the fact that there was the same incident in every restaurant, we had to do three full forensic audits. So Visa starts calling, American Express starts calling, Discover, they're, they're putting their own fines on us. So we get hooked up with a company called Coal Fire. And they came in and they said, all right, we've got to figure it out. We know that the forensics, we need to swap out every single register had to be swapped out. So every single machine in our restaurant had to be put a new machine in, and this time they had to have firewalls in them, which they didn't have because we assumed they had them. We assumed an awful lot of things, and we got educated very, very quickly. We assumed that we were PCI compliant. We, we assumed our, our, our restaurants were safe from this because we were told that the registers are PCI compliant. The register might be PCI compliant, but all the other aspects around that register are not. And that's what we were learning. We were learning about wireless internet. We're learning about logging into AOL, things that are dangerous, Facebook, things like that that create all these other problems. So we, we clamp down. Coal Fire helps us clamp down. Our register provider really did a good job helping us clamp down, although that, that was the first problem we had was our, our password was across the board, every single restaurant had the same password. So it made it easier to maintain the register database. So that was our, one of our big mistakes. So we, lost, we had three total restaurants involved, and there, there could have been more, but I think they just gave up at that point, and we just started swapping out machines <clears throat> to the point where we couldn't even provide the machines to Visa, which, again, is another fine if you find that out. Um, we, at this point, like I said, PCI compliant was just a throw word to us. We really didn't have a knowledge of it. We, were, we make Whoppers for a living. We you know, try to treat our customers great. We try to protect our employees. We don't know anything about this computer situation. So Coal Fire gets us compliant, and then we get switched over. At that point, we have to do a thing called logging, and that's where Shaker and his company comes in. They have been a blessing, a godsend and I go to work every day feeling much better. There were days of no sleep. There was an incredible amount of money lost. There was, um, I mean, just the aggravation, the, the customer base that we were losing because we were jeopardizing the Whopper brand. We were jeopardizing Burger King Corporation. We were jeopardizing Liberty Restaurant Group as a whole because the customer sees us as the bad guy, no matter what. So we had the three forensic audits done. We worked through them. They were very long, very grueling, as was getting coal, us up current with coal fire. That was a very long, grueling process that took four months of $5,000 a month more in fines each time. So we all in, in totality lost up to $200,000 on this breach. And since we hired Shaker and ATC, we can feel, we go to work feeling very good these days. We don't feel that we have any situations where we're going to have breaches. I can trust that everything that's in our systems is clean. I have, I can see access to all the, my logging, which is required every year. Now I have to be able to provide this because now I am considered a level four with a breach, I think, which is the worst. I am the worst customer for Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover. So now that I'm compliant and now that I have ATC on my, on my team, I feel very confident that going forward, I will be safe and secure as long as I continue to maintain and do our job and Shaker does his job and Coal Fire does their job and the registered provider does their job. We will all hopefully be secure going forward. We, we feel we are in the clear right now and we are going forward with, it's a little bit more money to maintain it, but now it's part of our maintenance. That is part of our maintenance of a registered system is the cost of ATC and the cost of the audits. We, we include that now in our budget. It's part of our budget going forward. We are very comfortable in, in ATC's ability to cover our back door. They are a wonderful company with great customer service and very good reporting tools. Excellent, excellent reporting tools, excellent people working for them. It's, just, it's, been a, it's really been a, a lot of weight lifted off my back because I'm the one that had to do this whole thing. So, and it's a lot of weight off my husband's shoulders, too, because now he can go and run the business and not worry about how much money is going out the back door. It's right off our bottom, the bot, all of our profits, right out the door. So we feel going forward 
that we are in very, very, very good hands. And thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Tracy. I'm actually going to hand over the rest, the remainder of today's presentation back to Shaker. And Shaker, you now have the floor. Tracy, uh, thank you very much for the detailed description. I'm sure a lot of people on this call uh, have questions, which I'm sure they'll be asking you uh, later on. But I want to quickly go through what the process is to satisfy Visa and the security assessment firms for those of you who may not be familiar with it. Well, uh, in, the, in Tracy's case, in Liberty Restaurant Group's case, uh, the QIRAs, and that's again a fancy term, but it's really qualified incident response assessors who show up in the event of a breach. They really don't look at self-assessment questionnaires and SAQCs and SAQDs. What they really look for is the PCI DSS and all the 286 controls that are in it to determine the cause of the breach and to see where the compliance is failing. So by no means can you arrive at a judgment here quickly. So if you don't have the proof, it essentially means that you're not compliant. And to be sure, building that evidence takes a lot of time. It's not something you can do overnight. So as a restaurant owner, in Tracy's case, uh, she realized that as, a, as an owner of this chain, that they are responsible for data security, to build the evidence, to provide all the support required on an everyday basis to stay PCI compliant. So the bottom line is multi-store restaurants and multi-store operations, many of whom are on this call, are at high risk today because of lack of all these types of controls. So to, to briefly state what happens and what Tracy also talked about is the visa fines begin at $5,000 per month, and it can be higher as well. And if there's a data compromise, it could result in further fines from Visa and MasterCard to recover the monetary losses suffered by the credit card issuers affected by the breach. American Express, they'll start at a much higher level. The numbers are around $50,000 for PCI noncompliance. And so there are more and more of these fines that pile on, and beyond that, the state regulations these days, many law states have passed laws to protect this information. That could also affect the merchants as well. So the question then becomes, how do you avoid future breach attempts, much like in Tracy's operations? All the tools and the technologies to support data security is available today, and we really need to pay attention to a few basic issues. You have to accept the fact that compliance is an ongoing journey. It's not something you do today and stop doing tomorrow. You have to make sure you understand your network environment, hardware, and software that exists in each one of your locations, and you have to get help from experts who can help you. Tracy is running an operation which involves hiring people, running 23 restaurants, making sure the customers are satisfied, and providing good quality service. Her job and her, her people's job is not to become data security experts, but unfortunately, you have to understand and accept the fact that you have to make sure that your systems are secure. But there are experts available, and you can get help from them. So to begin with, if you don't know much about this area, start with a gap analysis. Understand where your gaps are. Document it. And please don't take any shortcuts in this area. Then you can determine how to address these gaps. And a lot of people will try to get around all these PCI issues by reducing scope, et cetera. You can do that to some degree. But most importantly, Try not to have what are known as compensating controls or workarounds to make sure that you are addressing the PCI compliance issues. In other words, fix the gaps right the first time. Go through the 12 PCI DSS requirements, but really what it represents is 286 controls that you have to pay attention to. 
So it's really not about filling out forms at all. You can do that. You have to submit these forms, but it really is about securing your environment and supporting it with real evidence and reports that you need to have in place. So the solution in Liberty Restaurant group, group case was Omega Secure. It is a hosted managed service and we are taking care of everything associated with data security in their 23 locations, which really represents hundreds of machines. It's not just 23 locations. And it's a single pane of glass for the entire data security operation. So what we provide as part of this operation is all the critical areas of PCI DSS is addressed. We provide them with proof of validation and compliance, not just on a quarterly basis, but actually on a weekly basis. And there's a security strategist behind all of this, making sure that things are being done every day. That includes external scanning, and an often overlooked area is internal scanning, centralized monitoring of multiple stores, so that there's one console where they can and we can see everything that's going on, remediation. So what good is identifying problems if you can't fix them? You have to fix all these problems as and when they are discovered. And what you might fix today, meet tomorrow, because Microsoft changes something, you have to fix those problems again. Data retention, the requirement is to hold on to all these logs for a year or more, and we keep it, keep it available online for an entire year. The evidence required to support the SAQ, once you fill out the forms, you also have to prove that, yes, I'm compliant in these areas, and yes, here's a proof that I'm compliant. And having secure remote control with two-factor authentication, even to access the console, a two-factor authentication is required so that nobody can accidentally get into this console and look at information, providing antivirus, anti-spyware, and making sure that every activity is completely logged and completely up-to-date. Another area is event logging, all the Windows event logs, application logs, even a POS system logs need to be retained. And then you have to patch these systems on a regular basis to make sure that anytime Microsoft introduces something in terms of patches, all these systems get updated. Discovering the presence of credit cards in systems that should not have that information. File integrity monitoring. In these small systems, you still have to do file integrity monitoring. And it, believe me, these days it's not that difficult to take care of it, but what is difficult is to make sure that you're not pounding these systems with so much information and deluging a person like Tracy with all that information. All she needs to know is everything is in check, everything is in control, and she's able to look at alerts to take care of any issues that need to be taken care of, and the security strategist will give her a call if they see any issues. Wireless intrusion detection, that needs to be in place as well. Most people think, oh, gee, I don't have wireless in my stores, so I don't have to worry about it. That was never the consideration. The real consideration is any rogue wireless detection, rogue wireless access occurring at the stores. These days, these, wire, these wireless access points can be you know, in your pocket, and they can connect into that environment if they have somebody helping them from the inside. And they also get access to all the reports on a weekly, monthly, and quarterly basis. So that's what a single pane of glass really means in terms of data security. So the result at Liberty Restaurant Group today, and we've had the system running there for a year, long after the breach has occurred, and, and Tracy knows that this can happen again if it's not managed properly. So in their case, all the Omega Secure agents, these are small software agents that are running in these systems, were up and running in 45 days, because in her case, the fines continued until she could demonstrate compliance. And Tracy, correct me if I'm wrong, this had to be shown before the fines stopped. The compliance audit had to be passed, and the fines had then ceased. The $5,000 a month, all of that stopped. And they had to get comprehensive technology in place to manage the most difficult aspects of PCI compliance. Surely a 23 restaurant chain cannot possibly have servers running in their home offices because they have to run a business. So we take care of those issues for them. And 
they have to still run the restaurants every day while these things are going on. So essentially, had to minimize any interruption to the individual restaurants or any stores and to make sure there were no hardware changes required. It's hard enough to put firewalls in place and to replace a point of sale systems, but to interrupt the store's operation is a big no-no. And all the individual stores had to be connected into securely, remotely, making sure the logs are accessed from a single console so that you don't have to go to five different systems for different pieces of information. And all the forensic logs are retained at the Omega Secure Data Center, which in and of itself is PCI compliant. And the security strategists are monitoring the systems and dealing with any issues on an ongoing basis so that Liberty Restaurants and Tracy and her people can focus on their business and not have to worry about managing data security. So at this point, I'm going to open up uh, for questions and turn it back over to Angela. And this is a rare opportunity, again, to have Tracy Amoroso on the call with us to discuss really what her experience is. Angela, back to you. Thank you, Shaker, and thank you again, Tracy. Like Shaker said, we're now going to open the floor up for questions. As a reminder, just feel free to type the questions into the chat box and send those questions to Angela Halpin. We'll address as many questions as we have time for today. If we do run out of time, we'll email the answers to attendees of this webinar. So our first question reads, what fines did you face and did your POS provider assist in paying for these fines? Uh, we, got, we received $5,000 a month uh, from Visa. We received $12,000 from American Express. We received, and that was what month, they were, and that 12000 was a one-shot deal. 5000 a month was for the entire time we were going through the process. And we had to, we received one from Discover, I think it was 3800 But the rest of the costs were, with the, the forensic costs were $15,000 per forensic. Um, and we did three of those. And then our cost to coal fire and our cost is maintaining. And yet, I will, our registered provider was very supportive through the process. But because of our agreement with them, I, I can't say too much about the rest of the re registered provider. But yes, they, they actually put the sonic walls in for me. They did a lot of the, they changed out my registers without any cost to me. So they, yes, they were very, very, very supportive. Great, thank you. Next question, how much of a role did the firewall play in becoming PCI compliant? And if so, which firewall solution did you choose? Uh, the, the firewall was very integral and in, um, the first thing that we did, and I don't know the type of firewall, but I will find that information and we can send it out. I don't know the specific, maybe Shaker knows that, I don't know. It's sonic wall, Tracy. Sonic wall? Sonic yeah. wall. Okay. Great, thank you. Tracy, was the breach via an unsecure PC in the store, the Wi Fi, or some other vulnerable device, or lack thereof? The, the, they never identified the exact breach. Um, we did not have wireless in these restaurants. The password was was the same in every register provided by the register provider. And not just mine, everyone else's too. That was the problem. So they, it could have been a technician working in, they, they, they sort of funneled it down to something in Russia, but they never really gave us a clear answer on it. Just another comment here, Angela, and that is, um, Password policies, many of these stores are running independently. They're not part of some big wide area network. So each location has to be verified to make sure the passwords are changing frequently and then alerting them when passwords need to be changed as well. So that is a critical, critical issue because employees come and go. Mm -hmm. And another thing is Burger King didn't really have a, uh, an operating policy in place. 
again, they, we make burgers for a living, and this is very new. Credit card and gift card usage has gone up so much in the last four years. It's almost we do almost 45% of our business in credit cards, and you know, eight years ago we did zero because we didn't have credit card machines. So it's a tremendous increase for us. And Burger King didn't have a policy in place, so there was it just said go buy, register, and install it, and that was it. There was nothing. No one ever taught us about passwords or or PCI compliance, right? And now, of course, Burger King is stepping up to that, and there's, there are policies in place, but there weren't any when we first started this. A huge change. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Our next question is, is using external card processing machines safer than an internal POS card processing software? I'm going to say yes, because when I had my restaurant in Brooklyn, we had external, and we, we never had a problem because there was no internet. We had no internet. It's the internet that creates the problem, in my mind. And this is a question that often comes up as well. Can I separate my payment process from my cash registers and so on? You know, in some cases, it is practical, but in other cases, the volumes are high. It just slows down the whole process. But if you protect these systems in the first place, you don't have to deal with it and make sure that there's absolutely no possibility of a breach just because you're protecting your entire network. But Tracy, I agree with you. But having it separate, yes, it reduces the risk. Mm -hmm. it, would have been, it would have been nice if, in the beginning, if there was a package, you bought your register and the a system like ATC provides came with that, and, and that would it would be nice to see that package happen because really, again, we don't know what we're supposed to do. So to have them educate us up front and say, yeah, this is required, you need to do this, it would be, you'd buy into it immediately versus having to go back around and, and say, gee, now we have to do this, now we have to do this. Now suddenly the register doesn't cost you know $30,000, it's costing $50,000 because you have to add all these other bells and whistles. So I would have preferred a package, but again, it was many years ago and there weren't these problems. Great, thank you. Our next question is, what happens if you're missing hard drives for an auditor to examine? <laughs> like the one that I was missing? Uh, the problem, you, it, it's a fine. You'll get a fine for that because you're, they think you're hiding the information. The problem is it, it was sent back to the provider because they thought something was wrong with it, and then Verizon, who was in my forensics, wanted it, and I, and they couldn't find it. It was out of my hands already. I had a trail, a paper trail for it, but they couldn't ever find the machine again. So I don't know whether the per register provider decided that they didn't want anyone to find it. I don't know, I, but I, it, we did get a fine for that. Okay. Our next question is, if the recommendations to attain PCI compliance coming from Burger King Corporate would have been followed, assuming that they were giving these recommendations at the time, I'm not sure, Tracy, would this breach have been averted? They, weren't, they didn't give us any direction. There was no operating procedure in place at all. So no, they, they, you know, we depend on those and we, we follow them to a T. Had there been one? Certainly, it would have helped. But again, hindsight's always 2020. They didn't have any process in place, and we have thought that perhaps the register provider should have provided some of that information. But it, again, they didn't either. There was no direction given on any of that. And I mean, again, I didn't even know what PCI meant until this whole thing took place. Tracy, can you talk about? all the emotional hurdles that you and your people went through when all of these things were going on? You mean my new gray hair? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it, I mean, there was, every time, every time a FedEx guy came into my, my office, I cringed because it always meant that's another fine. They would send you a little piece of paper and say, guess what, we're taking 5000 again. And then they would just not settle your credit cards. They would just take it automatically and you had no control over it. it would just Money would stop showing up. They, Visa was actually fairly good to me in the, in the way they only fined me for one breach. They let it be like a package. Normally, they will fine you by store. 
and it just got so big that they, act, they we worked with them and we tried to do the best we can and they were actually pretty pretty generous. Amex was the, was also quite generous that way but um, you know it was, we didn't every day going to work was sickening to me because I always knew it was going to be another problem and I my husband was going crazy, I was going crazy, my teams in the stores think they're doing something wrong. They felt, we had managers quit because they felt when Homeland Security went in there, they really felt like they were being challenged and made to feel guilty for something and yet they really didn't do anything wrong. They were saying that they had credit card skimmers, they must have, and, and we, they didn't. They, they found no indication of any of that. And then when it kept, went to another restaurant, we realized, oh, this is bigger than we thought. So, it, I mean, it was, it was a sickening, sickening process, and I would never wish this on anyone. I, I don't want to ever go through it again. That's why I have Shaker. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. <laughs> and Shaker, this next question is addressed to you. Shaker, does your product continually keep the PCI DSS 286 controls documented and the proof needed in the event your clients are suspected of a breach? The answer is yes, except for the physical controls that need to be in place at the locations themselves. You know, we cannot lock the doors for, for the operations, but these are all policy related. But other than that, keeping track of each one of the 286 controls and keeping it up to date and logging and producing reports on a weekly basis and actually looking through these alerts is a big part of our job. Thank you. Uh, this one's for Tracy. Tracy, do you allow for free Wi-Fi at your restaurants? We did. So three, in three of our ones, the restaurants that we built, um, we had free Wi-Fi, and we took it out because I, there was just a level of fear that I didn't have. I had so much, so little comfort with it because I didn't understand how it was working. So we took it out. But I know that I can put it back in, and I've been assured that I can do it. I haven't gone there yet, though. I'm just not ready. I'm so afraid to provide any open door to anyone that I'm not ready to put Wi-Fi in, although I think it's a very great value-added service in the restaurant. And it is possible today to do it, to keep that completely separate and monitor it to make sure that there's no rogue wireless access occurring at all. Uh, it's absolutely possible to do it. A lot of people are doing it as well. But previously, there was no way to check it. Now there's a way. Right. Thanks. Another question. Do you use a visitor log, badges, camera system, lock office doors, and other PCI physical security procedures? Yes. We have a visitor log, which we've always maintained in Burger King. We have video in 20, 20 of the restaurants. That's the second process we did was go through putting in a, um, a video that we can, you know, have access to and see. We don't do it remotely. We do not access it remotely, though. That's something they have to go into the store to view. Locked office is mandatory. Um, chronic password changes are mandatory. Uh, ownership of of passwords and user IDs is monitored regularly. Um, we, we put all the necessary things in place that we had to in order to get compliant, and now it's just a matter of maintaining. And I mean, like in any business, you have to constantly monitor and watch. And we have to remind and, and let them, you know, don't write your password down and stick it to the side of the computer. That's a silly thing. You know, you have to keep re-educating. And with the turnover employees, it's a constant re-education. Huge issue. Yeah. Okay. So we're almost up to quarter of the hour. I'm going to um, end the question and answer session with this last one. Is the entire chain using the same system managed by an outside provider, or are you all operating systems that you have specifically sourced? And last part of that question is who manages the systems and the data? Uh, okay, Burger King in general does not have a across-the-board system. We have four providers that we can purchase from. They don't. They have not made recommendations as far as the um, lot, like 
Shakers Company. It's still very new. I'm sure they're going to get some provi providers and set them up so you have preferred pricing and whatnot. They haven't done that yet. I don't believe unless Shaker can update that. But Burger King itself across the board does not, they only tell me I can, I can do four of them. So I, I can pick an any, from any one of them. Do you, face, you have the same system in all of your locations now, right? That you've chosen. I am. Yes, that makes that only makes good sense. I have four, 23 restaurants. Every one of them has the exact same system in them, and every one of them is running with the exact same software and um, the same lockdowns. I have websites that only they can go to. They can't just arbitrarily go to any website. We have this across the board. My restaurants are blanketed, including my menu choices. We have another customer. They are using 78 different point of sale systems in their stores. That's a nightmare that companies can easily avoid. Great. Thank you again, Shaker. Thank you so much, Tracy, for sharing your story today. And I just wanted to also let anyone, everyone know that we'll supply the answers to all these questions via email to the webinar attendees. So that concludes today's webinar. We will also be sending a link to a recording of today's webinar via email to all participants. It will also be hosted on omegasecure.com. Thank you for joining us today. Tracy, thank you. Angela, thank you very much. And all of you who are attending this webinar, thank you for your time today. <laughs>